Good day folks, here I'm testing a primitive version of my last circuit, that's the starting of it anyways. So right now I got the high voltage transformer, the microwave transformer, charging these series caps, about uh, 33 UF altogether. And the voltage is slowly but steady rising on it. So the whole idea is to create a potential difference. Now I don't have all the parts to do the uh, 10 to 20 kV, so I'm just experimenting with what I got around the house here. So essentially I got the inverter running at, at milliamp levels and it's going through this microwave capacitor for reactive and power correction and then in series with this peg cell. So to give us like that super resistance without dropping the potential like it normally would. And this is going into the primary of the um, microwave transformer. And on the secondary, I have these capacitors charging on the high voltage side with a slow increase because we're basically using only pure potential and there's a lot of capacitance here. But what's remarkable is even under a load, it's going up and what I'm doing, since I don't have the capacitor right now on the other side of the circuit and the dual switching, I'm just doing a basic version of this. So the displacement current setup is the ground of these capacitors go back to the ground of the battery and the plus of the capacitor through a very high resistor. So the peg cell here going back into the plus. So we're creating a displacement current between the battery's potential and the forever increasing because uh, we're charging it through the primary and the secondary here. And this is going through the peg cell. And as you see, the neon light is lighting up and is getting brighter and brighter, supporting the idea of that we're using the um, pure potential to do the work of current. And the more uh, uh, potential we have, the stronger the system through displacement. So you can see the neon there going. And what's happening here is it's trying to equalize between the capacitor's voltage, which is at 129.4 now flickering against the 12 volt of the battery. So it's always moving in that direction through the peg cell. So whatever milliamps we're getting here is essentially a bonus and the displacement current is dumping. So essentially we're charging the battery and the system keeps climbing. So this is all a very good sign here and uh, I just wanted to uh, document this and what's very interesting is this is the inverter running the 60 hertz to the uh, primary side. Now once you've got the displacement current going we can turn off the inverter here and you'll see here what's going on but the neon of course stays lit for a few seconds. I don't know if you saw that, but it takes a while to drain because we're not letting it directly. So I'm going to turn it back on. So you'll see it's going back up there. But I got to tweak the resistance values here. Perhaps this peg cell is giving it uh, too much resistance. So uh, there's a sweet spot, but I turned it on so you can see it's glowing again. It's starting to build back up. So essentially this is secondary. As I was saying in the last video, this isn't real current, but displacement current can do the same work without affecting, you know, without... Um, draining the traditional current that's available in the system. So we're taking advantage of the transformer to give us capacitors these high voltage charge without using the current because we're dropping it with the capacitor making it more efficient and the peg cell is acting like kind of like a resistor but without dropping the potential because it actually contributes to the overall a little bit as well instead of traditionally taking it away. So, so far so good for this and as I'm talking 129 already. Now I'm sure if I like would ground this or something, it would probably work better. But this is just quickly to show you that even at 129 versus 12 volts, there is going to be a displacement current. But if you're going to want to run light bulbs with this, you're going to have to get at least 10 to 20 kV on the capacitor side here. To have enough uh, what I calculated about being 200 milliamps which by the way at 160 volts to a normal light bulb would give you more than enough to drive a 60 watt light bulb at full brightness or even 
brighter at milliamps input current with this method of course i gotta figure out the dual channel switching because the more efficient way of doing this is through the switching of the capacitors back and forth through the transformer to take advantage of this uncoupled vi action here but i just wanted to show you crudely what's going on here because people are always saying you know they, they complain right you give them theory they say well we don't see any application it's, it's all junk unless we see application so i show you application but then they turn around and say hey we don't have any theory this is all garbage we don't have any circuit diagrams or anything so I'm just showing you now, if you want diagrams of the basic concept, just go to the last video. And again, this neon here is being lit up completely through the um, displacement current. And that's going back into the battery here. So I just, so I guess as we talk, it keeps charging up because what's happening is it, 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 we're, it's charging more than we're putting in the output through displacement current because we're limiting. It wants to really, really equalize, but we're not letting it. So it's giving it a chance for these capacitors to slowly charge. See, now we're getting at 130. So if we were to run this probably all night, by the end of the night, I could probably run a small uh, light bulb with a few watts on here without actually draining the load, and it's actually going to charge the battery. So another indication is the inverter is running nice and cool, and there's no fan running. I know that if I take any more than a, a watt or so, the fan starts right away in here. So very quiet. I'm not even hearing it switching, so it's not even... Let's get very quiet. No, you don't even hear it. I'm not even hearing the microwave trans. It's so quiet because we're using pure potential here. But again, I'm going to... So again, to support the thing, I'm not switching it right now. But if we were switching it properly on, off, on, off, or during the off time, it's feeding off the capacitor, we'd be more efficient because when you turn it off for a moment, I'll show you, it doesn't stop the displacement because there's still a potential difference between the two systems. So I'm going to turn it off click see it's off now but the neon still stays lit for several seconds because of all that high potential now the capacitor equalizes to the voltage of the battery and then it stops so we turn it back on and quickly it goes back up to about 100 volts and then once it gets to 112 then it'll be enough for that 100 volts and there it is the neon lights up so of course at this voltage only a few milliamps of displacement current that's why uh, voltage matters the higher the potential the more power you can produce out of pure voltage so it's very real being able to convert pure voltage into power you just got to run your circuits essentially backwards where the voltage takes the role of current in your circuits through displacement and you get the work done that way and recycle it back into a master storage or a battery like i'm doing here so this is a very simplified version of the last circuit i was demonstrating but it is doing the job to show as a demonstrative concept proof of concept is working excellent so imagine this neon being a 60 watt light bulb running at a few milliamps at full brightness this is what i'm getting at it doesn't take long for it to top back up but yeah i'm going to play with this a little bit to try and find the sweet spot here i'm sure i can get a little bit more out of it not much more though according to the calculations but um yeah potential potential folks potential is where it's at but I understand once you start getting into like the 100 kilovolts or so, things start getting funky, you know. But, you know, if you want to risk it and take it on, that's where the kilowatts are. So, um, yeah, very good way of doing it. The peg cell really assists in keeping the heat. No, no, basically virtually no loss in heat. And it's doing the job just as I uh, th in my in my theories, so. And with that said, I'll let you go, folks. I just wanted to give you a crude demonstration 
of the displacement current and um, I will uh, let you go and thank you all for watching and I made a little notice here earlier I was showing you the meter on there because I wanted to show you partially what was going on but just like Bedini says a lot of times when you put meters on here it screws everything up and sure enough the meter was detuning to hold the device significantly and as soon as I disconnected the meter I noticed quite a performance increase so I'm going to show you that right now because of course with this kind of energy sometimes it's very hard to measure and it's ironic right because people want to see what, what it's doing, hook up the meters, what it's doing but as soon as you put the meter on it screws everything up. So um, right now I'm going to show you back to where we were here and the neon is running as, as is so I'm going to turn it off now and it's going to work so I'm turning it off. So now it's off. So now the neon is staying lit up. So I'm going to try and um, see if I can block some of that light there to show you a shadow here. I don't think I can. But this is, right now it's off. So during this time we've got hundreds of volts hitting that battery back trying to, to the displacement current. And this is actually... Um, pretty significant and it's not traditional we're not using traditional current we're do using displacement current so even though the inverter is like completely off we're still charging the battery with as, as close as we can folks with pure potential believe it or not because it takes over a hundred volts and maybe 80 to maintain this of at least of a potential difference so at over 80 volts right now is hitting this battery so with lead acid and pure potential we know that does some interesting charging mechanisms to the battery so again as we speak see how long it's maintaining but it's still do it the only reason this is working is true to displacement current because we still have a major hundreds of volts of the difference between these capacitors and the battery through the peg cell now the peg cell is working as much as I'd like to say here, people are not going to like me for it, but in this configuration it's working as a true negative resistor because it gives you that incredible resistance we need to pull this off where we turn essentially um, the, uh, we're able to bring the um, current down quite a bit, but unlike traditional resistors the potential actually goes up instead of down because of the electrostatic potential uh, so it actually contributes to the whole system by helping to maintain instead of diminish with regular resistance so it's acting as a kind of negative resistor in that sense so it's helping it a lot the peg cell plays a very unique role in this configuration of displacement current because as you see the neon there, we, that means we still have, as I'm talking right now, over 80 volts of pure potential hitting that battery. So that has to do something to it, you know what I'm saying? So thanks to the peg cell, we're not losing any potential and we're getting that resistance we need. So that we're not just shorting it out. So now it's starting to lose there. So we're getting close to... Um, the equal voltage but it still has to be over 80 volts to keep the neon going because the neon doesn't work below 80 volts but you can still see it there so this is quite remarkable that it maintains it like this So we're still charging the battery folks with pure potential and the inverter is off and this is hundreds of volts over here pretty neat huh so working much better without the meters so a lot of times when we experiment with this stuff even with analog meters they could really screw things up but the problem is people want to see the readings but if you've got the good math to support it, it shouldn't be such a problem if you, if you know what the loads are supposed to do, right? But in that sense, it's not to cheat everyone. It's just I showed you right there with the meter, it made a big difference. Without the meter connected, it's maintaining it a lot better. The meter completely detuned it. 
So not as strong anymore there, but we still have a glow. So now I'm going to turn it back on. So of course, almost instantly, it's really, it picks right up. Because this is already charging to hundreds of volts through the secondary here, and we're using zero current to trigger it. Again, there's also a peg cell on the uh, primary side helping us along there doing this trick. And here it is. Everything runs very, very cool. Very efficient way of doing it, folks. Just demonstrating and noting some observations. So here the lesson is meters could really screw us up. And could really give us the break or make moment. So I'll let you go. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.